Good morning guys, welcome back to Talbot Industries. Today, we're going to be giving you an overview of my truck, 2018 3500 Mega Cab Dually, diesel, and a G56 manual. Well, there it is. Finished getting it all cleaned up, and then I got a phone call and had to go tow a truck for somebody, so... Now it's not as clean, but we'll still give you a good walk around and tell you about the truck. So it's a 2018 Ram 3500 Mega Cab Dually in Delmonico Red Laramie package, and it has a G56 standard transmission. Uh, I special ordered the truck in September of 2018 within a week of the cutoff point of when you can no longer order the trucks. And I picked it up December 15th of 2018. Uh, currently has just over 10,000 miles on it. I do daily drive it to and from work. It does not drive in the winter. So we will be putting it away here soon. Because winter's going to come before we know it. Um, outside of the truck, I had fully professionally ceramic coated. Along with 3M, uh, the clear protective film which you can kind of see the line right there um so i got the 3m film done from the front fender area across the top of the hood the headlights are done from the body line here down is done rockers are done the inner door sills are done and then the bed from this line all the way back to the middle Right there you can see it is all 3M protective tape along with the area directly above the tailgate handle where your hand slides across the tailgate. Um, had it done by Connecticut Ceramic Coatings. The guy's name is Nick. Did a great job. I love the coating. Love how easy it is to clean. Um, he also did about 40 hours worth of paint correction work to it. And that was with a truck with about... 4,000 miles on it when I got it to him. So, really good job. No swirls, no scratches, anything like that. Hopefully, you know, it'll help me keep the truck cleaner, longer, and better shape because I don't plan on getting rid of it. Um, other stuff that's been done on the outside, I tinted the windows dark. I'll say that. And possibly dark as well. The vent shades on the windows front and rear are done. I do have aluminum diesel fuel and DEF covers as well because the factory system does not have a diesel cap. It just has this little flapper valve in there and that's all you got. But over time, you can see there's, there is dirt in there. So that would eventually make it in your tank and just don't want more contaminants in there than what you can prevent so I got those caps on those are good um, I got dirt flap mud flaps front and rear the fronts are their standard issue extra long extra wide and I did get the stainless on the bottom which I plan on painting black because I'm not a huge fan of chrome and then in the back I had the back ones custom made and they added one inch to the outside and the inside and they're also the long ones. And the reason why I did that is you could see how they stick out past the Laramie flares. And what I noticed from the pictures I got from them is that the standard rear mud flaps wouldn't stick out past the factory flares. And I thought that it would look kind of, it wouldn't look right if the front stood out and the backs didn't. So I added an inch. If I were to do it again, they're pretty close, but maybe I add you know closer than an inch and a half on the outside to make it even but overall you know they're great quality's great everything like that um, I did option the truck out with the rear air suspension so you can see there's your sensors for load detection that'll detect off that rod on the, the leaf spring you know if you start to weigh the truck down that arm goes up compensates by putting air into the airbag it has a full self-contained 
air system that I'll show you on the other side. Um, you don't have too, too much control over it. Um, if you're empty, there's nothing you can do with it. If you are loaded, it does give you the option for, it's called alternate trailer height, which will um, dump the air out of the bags and return, you know, lower the truck down if you were trying to, you know, get something out of the bed or whatever. I haven't found a use for it for what I do, but it is nice that you hook up a trailer, whether it be my gooseneck or my dump trailer over there, squats down, airbags inflate, truck sits level again. Um, obviously, I did get the gooseneck prep, but I went with the B&W ball and safety tie downs. Um, the reviews I found said the B&W stuff was really good. I've always ran B&W stuff in the past and liked it. Um, the handle's a nice idea. Also got the camera in the third brake light, so you can see backing up to the trailer, you know, gooseneck. And then it does have one in the tailgate as well for your bumper pull options. Um, still factory. Go around this side. Underneath your passenger side is where all the onboard air stuff is for your airbag. So there's the tank. Um, not 100% sure where the compressor is, but it's around here somewhere. Dig into that later. And that's really all that's done to it on the outside of the truck. Um, I do have plans for it. I do want to do some color matching, get rid of some of the chrome. Um, in 2018, they wouldn't let you get the sport appearance package with the stick. For whatever reason, it said that the sport bench seat that you get with the sport package wasn't compatible with the stick. If you ask me, it would have worked. They just didn't want to put effort into you know, having to spec stuff out for a stick. There are options that I did lose by getting a six speed instead of the automatics. Um, and I'll go over those. Those are mostly on the inside, but it's really the overview of the outside of the truck. The other thing I wanted to mention is I emailed Chrysler to try to get some production information on the truck. Cause obviously, you know, the six speed is a, you almost have to order the truck if you want a six speed. Um, they do kind of make them for the base model trucks, you know, tradesmen, stuff like that. Um, now it's no longer an option. Two, 2018, they killed it, and you can no longer get a six-speed in these trucks. So this, this truck's probably one of the last ones to be built. Build date of 11, 2018. Um, so I did reach out, and the reply I got was that for four-wheel drive, 3500 mega cab dualies in Delmonico red Laramie package there were 377 trucks made out of the 377 trucks made 12 of them had a 6-speed G56 manual tranny in it and if you broke down my VIN number option for option this is the only one so I consider it a 1 of 12 truck just because if you want to look at it, it's technically one of one, but there's so many different, you know, options that you could pick out that really, if you're going to custom order a truck and you don't get it completely specced out, it's most likely going to be, you know, a very low number just because there's endless possibilities of combinations of options to get. So I consider it one of 12, which is pretty cool. So if you see another one, let me know try to find find the other 11 so it's pretty cool definitely very rare truck for sure so on the inside just your normal laramie specked out truck um, you said just rolled over 10,000 miles there um, the 18s have the nice nice dash the laramies come with the 8.4 uconnect and then also the 2018s have carplay which i really like um there's what everyone likes is a stick. Electronic transfer case, which I'm not a fan of, but there's no way around it. Um, and the one thing you lose with having a stick is that you're back to a key and not push button start. So you lose your push button start and also your keyless entry. 
where everything just go, you know, reads off the proximity of the key fob in your pocket. You can unlock and lock the doors, push button start. Um, that is stuff that I have looked into and it is possible from what I've seen to add it. So down the road, I think I will be adding that option to this. Um, the other things that you lose are the rear seats are not heated just because in the automatic trucks, the heated seat switches are in the back of the center console. And I guess there's no room back there, which in all reality, there's plenty of room to put switches back there in the back of this center console. I'll show you that in the back seat. Um, not a big deal for me. Don't plan on having to ever ride in the back seat of my own truck, but you know, is what it is, I guess. Um, got the Alpine stereo system. It's pretty good. Really no complaints, has a decent amount of bass. Sounds good, nice and crisp sound. Um, no sunroof, not a fan of them. Didn't see the need for it. Um, does have the power sliding back window. And I'll show you here. There's the cargo camera, so you can see backing up. And then your bumper camera for that. Um, all you know, heated and cooled seats is through the dash here. All your climate control is controlled here as well. Your AC, your temperatures, dual climate control, stuff like that. I do have the aux switches, which I do have plans for, and we'll be making videos about those. There's some pretty cool stuff I have planned. There's that alternate trailer height button that I was talking about. If you push that now, it just says, Right height not available, payload too light. Um, exhaust brake, which is great. Really works great with the six speed. Slows you down good, loaded or unloaded. Factory trailer brake controller installed there. Um, cigarette port, USB charging port there. You do have 115 volt plug as well. And then two USB ports and an aux port on the inside of the center console. Um, it does have a light up in the the top center console that shines down on the shifter, which is kind of cool. Um, kind of annoying it sometimes too, but it's kind of neat. If no one's ever seen the the upgraded, not the upgraded, but the higher end dashes. They're kind of neat. You still have all your steering wheel controls and you can scroll through your options on the side. So you got your speed, um, all your vehicle info, you got gauges, engine hours, tire pressure, oil life, fuel filter life, battery voltage, your exhaust, um, brake horsepower, and your turbo boost PSI. And then go down. You have your instant fuel economy, it gives you your range, your average everything like that um, trip a trip b all your trailer info so it keeps track of you can have i believe there's five different trailers that you can select and then it'll keep track of how many miles you've done on each trailer and then in whatever you last had set for your gain you can it you know remembers that and then you select that in the dash under settings Oops. trailer and four trailers so you can select the four trailers um, the one thing i found is that there's a glitch with the 84 where it doesn't 84 you connect system where it doesn't let you name the trailers where in the other trucks that all that information is stored in the dash it's got the smaller screen we'll let you name the trailer it'll say like gooseneck dump trailer horse trailer you know equipment trailer stuff like that and there's an app called Alpha OBD, which I have, which I'll be doing some videos about. And you can enable certain options and stuff like that. And one of them is where you can change that to where you can name them. So I will be doing that and I'll show you guys. Um, back up on the dash, just has what audio you're playing, any stored messages, your dash setup. So you're able to change where I have set up for boost and brake horsepower exhaust brake. You can change those different gauges to, you know, battery voltage, just random stuff like that. Um, the ones in the top, so I got temperature, compass, 
average miles to the gallon and the range. You can change those to different settings as well. Commercial settings is where you enable your aux switches so you can have them be key on or power on, a um, momentary switch or an on off switch, and then remember last state memory or not. You can have those set up and back to the speed. So that's pretty much it up front. You know, comfy truck, really quiet on the inside, driving on the road, which is nice. And um, yeah, so we'll move to the back seat, the Mega Cab. Mega Cab, go big or go home, right? So back seats, plenty of leg room, plenty of room behind the seats. Um, the rear seats recline just like the front ones would. You have a lever, push back on the seat, back seats recline. Both sides also fold down. You pull this lever, pull the seats down. They do fold flat, my seat's in the way. Um, but they, both sides fold flat down so you have cargo space. There is the storage tray behind here where I just keep some ratchet straps, the two and a half, the two inch receiver adapter. All the electrical stuff that comes with the truck when you spec out for the aux switches I have in there for now as well. And across the back is again all open. Um, miscellaneous little hooks and stuff in the back, but you know, plenty of leg room. A little center fold down with cup holders there. It does have vents in the back, and like I said, I think with a little bit of changing, they easily could have put the switches for the rear heated seats right there. Um, I don't see why not. It's it's something that I definitely want to look into just to see if I can do it. Just is one of those because I can type deals. Um, kind of, we'll see where that goes. But factory all weather floor mats fit pretty good. I like them. Nice, you know, subtle wood wood grain texture all the way around. Not too much, but overall, you know, this is it. So let me know what you got for questions. If there's anything else I can go more in depth about on the truck, anything you want to see, just uh, yeah, just let me know. And uh, looking forward to making other videos for you guys. So enjoy your day.